Nice. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to toss the magic conch to myself just because I haven't talked about uh, what I've been playing on podcasts for a while. I usually defer just because we're running low on time. Uh, I, I have a giant list of stuff I have not talked about. Um, I'll talk, talk a little bit about Demon Souls and then probably Evil Within. Uh, so Demon Souls, I have had it basically no i've had it since christmas because my girlfriend's the one that bought it for me i've just constantly been putting it on the back burner because i've been telling myself oh i'm not in the mood for it i'll wait till like the backlog lightens and now it's at the point where most of my backlog is gone i'm just like oh fuck there's this thing i told myself i was gonna do it's gonna be a pain in the ass it's gonna be hard i'm gonna have to look up wikis like how do i get through this door where is this fucking obscure key or whatever and i just didn't feel like dealing with it but i finally started yesterday and I'm reminded that I love the Soul series and it's incredibly fun. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't see a lot of people talk about in in reviews or coverage or whatever. I'm, I've been playing it with headphones. It like the sound mm. design is fucking the amazing really in there. Good. It is, it is so good. Like I th- very good, especially when there's a- when there's like dickhead uh, enemy placement like around corners. You can just hear him yeah. breathing. I'm like, oh, that helps a lot. Or um. Something that's always helpful is you can hear people like reloading like crossbows and stuff, and you can Mm. tell where they are from the controller and the 3D audio. It's really awesome. Um, one thing I totally forgot about, and like this kind of maybe shares a little bit of DNA with Ernmo, maybe not so, but with Bloodborne, is that the health items are consumables versus recharging each time you get to bonfires. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pros and cons because, um, in Bloodborne, you'd find like plenty of situations where you just have to farm blood vials. But every time you go back to a lantern, because uh, you can only carry 20 at a time in Bloodborne, but each time you go back, you, it regenerates from like whatever existing pool that you have, like just in your storage. Um, it's not exactly the same in Demon Souls, but like I feel like the yeah. effect it has is because you have a pool. You can you can either buy stuff, you can find it off enemies. But basically, you have less of an incentive to constantly go back to a bonfire. So I find myself mm. taking a lot more risks. But at the same time, if I know I'm close to getting to the next section or whatever, I I find myself pushing myself more to make that advancement because going back to square one at uh, they're not, they're not called bonfires. What are they called? Uh, the archstones. Uh, the archstones. I, so like instead of being like, I don't know, this is risky. I'm blowing Estus flask. I might as well go back. Um, I'm just like, yeah, no, I've made it this far. I'm I'm not going to be magically gain more healing items by retreating. So let's just push through this and get it done. Um, so that's a interesting dynamic, even though there's literally the first Souls game. Um, yeah, it's definitely taken me a bit of an adjustment to come back to it after playing Sekiro like five times where I'm just parrying everything. It's a um, it's a very different game. The parry is not. It's it's stronger in some ways and and less of an incentive in others. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been using it sometimes, but I the ultimate strategy is still just do a regular block that stuns yeah. the enemy anyway and just slash at them. Regular or, block or, or roll out of the way. Or like the the blue eye uh, enemies I've been running into. Like all I've been doing is just circling around them and backstabbing. Yeah, that's, or that's don't even get close them. and just shoot them with magic. I don't yeah, play these games with magic. I'm not a coward. I'm not a coward. Busted in Demon Souls. <laughs> it is that's so strong playing. in Demon Souls. I refuse. It's so strong. Um, Demon? I still don't. Uh, this is probably a question for Nexus, but I don't. I don't remember what the fuck world tendency means. I'm still in the white, which I okay. assume is good. Okay. So. <laughs> Open <laughs> up a can of worms with this one. World yeah. tendency is a very silly system. So your world tendency determines uh, different different things that will happen in the world, right? So if you're a pure white tendency, you will unlock certain quests, right? Well, I'll give an example in the um, the 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 mine art stone, right, uh, with the dragon god. Um, when you're done with that world, if you're at white world tendency, you unlock a quest where you can talk to a guy and he's like, hey, can you find help me find this cool sword? And if you help him find the cool sword, you get the dragon bone smasher, which is a big like like dragon slayer guts berserk weapon. Right. Uh, and then if you're in pure black world tendency, you'll unlock uh, other types of NPCs. Right. So um, different guys will try to attack you or they'll they'll 
be like, oh, hey, uh, can you find this guy and, and kill him for me or something like that, right? Um, but the way that this works is that you gain white world tendency points by killing a boss and you lose white uh, 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 world tendency points, which pushes it towards black by dying or killing an NPC. Okay. And so essentially what you want to do in Demon Souls, if you want to be sure you get white world tendency is you want to, as soon as you finish killing a boss and you're revived in, uh, in human form instead of soul form, you want to immediately go back to the Nexus and ju- oh, that's why I got my name by me. And you jump off uh, the highest point and kill yourself so that you're in soul form. Because if you die in soul form, it doesn't affect world tendency at all. Then, then how do you necessarily constantly um, move it towards black tendency? Because like, even if you go into a world and you die, you go back to soul form. Does, does, so that doesn't if you want to push it, it towards black tendency, there's an item you can get that turns you back into human form. And so you pop that and then just kill yourself in the world. So either you, you get some enemies to kill you or you'll, um, or you'll jump off a bridge or um, there's like different NPCs in the world to like, I don't know. There's um, there's, I forget his name. There's like one of the knights who will help you in Boletaria. You can just kill him and then it'll push you towards black world. Tendency. There's basically no reason to go towards black tendency, right? Cause that just makes the yeah. game harder. Makes the game significantly harder. Um, makes a certain weapon deal more damage in Black World Tendency, which is mostly people just use it for PvP. Um, and then um, there's a couple quests that you can get, but honestly, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't recommend going towards Black World Tendency on purpose unless you're like pretty familiar with Demon Souls, because it does make this, the game quite a bit harder. This actually really works for me because even in the Dark Souls games, I never use items to uh, regain like human form or whatever. Yeah. I'd rather just I because I figure like there's there's a very limited. I just want to see if I can go through it like in I forget the term for it in there. Like I'd, I'd rather stay hollow. Yeah, like that's how I play those games. So if I just yeah. play it like that, I just this basically means nothing to me then. Right. Essentially. Yeah. OK. Only that, thing is like if you have died in human form already, I can it can totally fuck you over and you might not be able to get like the pure white world tendency, which is what unlocks certain quests and stuff. It's a it's an old system that I feel like was never fleshed out in the original, and because the remake is so faithful, they didn't really change it that much. This kind of made the icon on the menu a bit clearer. Okay. Um, it's definitely it's a it's a hell of a weird system. Um, can we come to the consensus? The best way to play these games is by starting starting off naked. Mm, yeah pretty much get, get get that fast roll like like when it when it comes to any of the souls games i i look up like uh whatever pr- equipment load percentage it is so that you can get that fast roll so like in the beginning of the game until i equ- until i increase my endurance so you can get a uh, higher equip load i'm just like i want that fast roll so i have i have shoes on i have gloves on i i have no shirt i'm just a naked boy yeah. running around shirtless i, I just want to roll if I remember correctly, Dark Souls 3 is the only one that, that poses an issue because of the way its armor system is done. Yeah. Like, I think it's something like if you have only, like, if you're missing a pair of gloves or if you are missing a shirt, like, you may as well just not be wearing armor. Yeah. Dark Souls 3. That's weird. If I recall, you get a flat percentage of armor increase just by having something on. And if you have nothing on in that slot, you don't get anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's, really weird that game is that's, has that's, a lot of questionable decisions <laughs> then they have like a useless stat in there what was it poise or something well, poise, poise is useless everything. in base game yeah okay essentially it doesn't do anything uh, i it's guess all, my... it's not quite as bad as resistance in dark souls one which is literally it makes your poison resistance go up wow oh my god <laughs> that's that's incredible i i mean it's useful when you're down in um what is it? Was it Blight Town? We have to run across everywhere. Yeah, but you See, can just get a shield that blocks that. <laughs> it's not nearly yeah. useful enough. No, literally, because it's one area that by the time you get to like, by the time you get to the bottom once, or the, you figure out, oh, I can use the master key and I can go backwards. Like, none of that matters. Or if you can mm-hmm. get the shield, the uh, spider shield that is available, I think, in the depths. Like, it, there's so many ways that to circumvent it that don't require you to like dump levels into a skill you're never going to use outside of that okay 
Um, I guess for my last note on uh, Demon Souls would be, I totally forgot you're not supposed to just go like beat one world, move on to the next world. You're supposed to like jump between them. So I think the yeah, guide I'm looking at right now, one. it says like do one, one, then two, one, then four, one, then three, one. Um, so you're, you're supposed to be like jumping around between like each, um, each dash segment. Um, I didn't, I did not pay attention to that at first because it's just like, mm. I want to fight the Tower Knight. I remember fighting Tower Knight from PS3 Demon Souls. It was pretty rad. Um, I did not deal shit for damage, but I had yeah. so many souls just like sitting at his feet. I'm just like, I can't just walk away from that. Um, but yeah, I, I beat Tower Knight way earlier than I was supposed yeah. to. And I'm feeling pretty damn good about that. What I always recommend people do is to go to just pick one and then just go there first, right? So let's say uh, I always suggest people go to um, the Shrine of Storms first. So four one. There's a lot of really, really helpful uh, items there for basically every build. And if you just do 4-1, there's, there's so many items you get out of doing that, that really then you can just kind of go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, 4-1 has some useful stuff. Uh, ask me after the show, I can get more specific. Um, but there's um, <laughs> good items there. Nice. But um, yeah, that's basically the game I'm going to be playing. Um, I know at least for the streams... Um, the, the game streams I've been doing, I've just been doing the Evil Within, uh, playing through the DLCs for those, which I haven't played. Um, I haven't played previously because they were mm. paid, they weren't included, whatever. But the mm. Game Pass version on PC does include them now, so cool. uh, enjoying those, but I'll save my Evil Within thoughts for um, for next week, I guess, once I finish up those DLCs. But if I finish those early, probably going to swap over to Demon Souls. 